Now that I've eaten up, I think, enough time for everybody to get mic'd up, I am thrilled to bring out to the stage to lead our discussion this afternoon, Nadine. Come on out, Nadine. And our other moderators that are joining us, Kata, Tess, and Tunch. Now to start off, Nadine, yeah. you've got a couple of stories. I think about three stories Nadine's going to show yeah. us. Yeah, thank you, Laura. From the briefing. Uh, as you can see, it's very important to keep people at the center of everything we do because sometimes technology can be a little bit tough. But that's, <laughs> uh, that's the point. Anyway, we got some very interesting content and uh, I'm happy to say that uh, most of you, all of you, I should say, because uh, I have to be real, uh, realistic, um, all of you, 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 made a, you made the game and you tried to do something crazy. I know in our Good. business daily life, it's not very easy to to become crazy because we are always expected to be serious, tracking the, the KPIs, etc. But this was the moment where we could make something completely different, like a kid. Mm -hmm. So let's start first with the first, let's have a look at one of the production, the first engage, uh, engagement uh, scenario, which is about engaging speech. Mm. Can everybody see? Maybe we should move away. Uh, sure. Why don't cut and test? We just kind of move to the side a little. It's a very visual presentation this afternoon. <laughs> okay. Tell so, us about it, Nadine. So I think it's, uh, it's really, uh, on this one we can see that uh, it's about, uh, not only about the content, but as you can see, it's about emotion again. Your body tells a lot and your body is speaking a lot. What do, would you say on this one? What would you add as a recommendation for an engaging speech? Any one of you, Tunch, if you want to start? I mean, uh, see, this morning we were talking about uh, mind and heart, and we told about when we see something, we react with our hearts. Uh, people think, how many people think that they feel with their hearts? Definitely a heart girl. I heart. feel with my heart. Okay. Yeah. Who else thinks that they, okay, some people. And how many people think that they think and feel with their brains? Because the rest doesn't think. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so all of us, we think with our brains and all the emotions in the brains. There was a neuroscientist this morning, but I don't know if he's still with us. So when you think with and feel with your brain, your body shows emotions, yeah. physical mm -hmm. emotions. Exactly. And your heart, because it starts pumping more blood when you are more romantic or more, you are more having more fun or the adrenaline is going up. So the heart doesn't feel anything or do anything. They just, it pumps blood. But since we feel it, we don't feel our brains. Hmm. We, we feel uh, some words. Today there was another presenter who mentioned that they, we think 52% of the time, there is yeah. some other idea in our brains. Mm -hmm. I think so, that feeling what you yeah. say is very important. Sometimes people are focusing on the text and they are just forgetting about the, the how Physical, do they yeah. embrace what yeah. they say. So yeah. yeah, anyone else? Yeah, Kata? Yeah, I would, I would uh, comment on this one. Don't pretend to be someone else. <laughs> be yourself because it will, it will show if you, want, if you want to be someone else and if it's not uh, genuine that what you are saying. Yeah. Mm. And another, maybe another um, trick is less is more. So yeah. Whenever you are preparing to a speech, try to tell your key message in one sentence. If you mm -hmm. can do that, you can give a speech of three hours on that key message, and if uh, you can give the same speech in two minutes. But always start with your key message and um, formulating it one sentence. Tess, you want to add something? Yeah, just a short note on authenticity. I mean, I've seen speakers who are uh, experienced and speak every single day of their lives and deliver a great message, but I've also seen speakers cry, fall down, crumble, <laughs> snap a stiletto heel, asking for a friend. Um, and I think that authenticity will always shine through because it doesn't matter if you, if you fudge your words or mess up or show a bit too much emotion or so on. I'd rather see that than not enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if I may add something from my previous experience organizing multi-language uh, multi um, events, uh, when you have to talk in front of people who are not native from your own language, 
Just consider the person you have in front of you. Make the, the, the text simple. They don't need mm -hmm. to reassess if you are good at English or good at Spanish or good at French. It's not the problem at the moment. Just make it understandable for everyone. And this is sometimes native people do not really do, mm -hmm. which is not the case today because I have to say that all our English uh, native speakers are really uh, understanding that we are not all of us English native or American mm -hmm. native. And this is very important as well to, to be engaged you need to make sure that everybody is understanding you. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes the best messages are those simplified yeah, messages. Exactly. The, the most profound words in some of the speeches, uh, you know, John F. Kennedy in his inaugural address in America, which was heard around the world, said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens of the world, ask not what America can do for you, but what together we can do. For the exactly. freedom of man. Very yeah. simple, you know, and yet it's, it's memorable. Okay, so now because we are a little bit uh, on time, uh, let's go to the second subject, which is engaging stand at a trade show. Oh, booth. Mm. Beautiful Fire, booth. Wonderful product. Yes, experimenting the product, by the way, is interesting as oh, much yeah. as you can do it. Great yeah. hospitality as well, yeah. yes, <laughs> especially food. <laughs> a good coffee is always welcome and not expensive, that's true. Sometimes you're yeah. organizing everything around the, you put a lot of money on the brochures, you put a lot of money on the, on the panels, on everything, but you're forgetting a simple detail, which is how you welcome your guests. Mm -hmm. And this is also making the difference sometimes. And professional situation, yeah, <laughs> be very uh, professional. <laughs> that was great. Okay, good. What would you have to say? On this one. I have to agree on the food. I mean, I think in, um, in terms of uh, an, uh, an exhibition or a trade show, you have a small window of opportunity, so you need to throw whatever you can at it to get those people mm -hmm. in. And if that's, you know, the difference between a frozen mini pizza and a nice piece of caviar on a blini, I'll go for the caviar. Yeah, definitely. And maybe some ice cream. <laughs> maybe some ice cream. Ice cream I think it's... <laughs> It's really depending. You now, anything we do uh, again is uh, is always to is always to be in line with the messaging, with the hospitality we want to deliver, with the people we have in front of us. Always keep the focus on what you want to achieve at the end. That's the only thing. If you keep this focus all the time, you will make it whatever the type of event. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay. Nothing mm -hmm. else on this one. We can move to the Very third good. one. Mm -hmm. Our company can engage participants during an incentive event. Okay. So, on this one, oh, why don't we have all of the, uh, anyway, doesn't matter. So, let's meet in November, it's a kind of, in, uh, of teasing, so just how to say, well, we will have, so prepare, in fact, the event before it, before it. Pleasure for all, yes, make something, make a program which is adapted to all kind of population you will have. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. Wow, awesome team, one awesome team. So yeah, make sure that everybody oh, is going okay. to share an experience which is, which is really building a team spirit. This is very important. And working hands in hand uh, on during an incentive, it's also in, very good to reinforce this kind of a, uh, team spirit and to make sure that people are talking in the one voice. If you have people coming to an incentive and if you say, well, you know, this guy is not good. <laughs> no, you, you miss it. It's the moment where you all have to share something common in terms of brand experience, in terms of uh, messaging you will deliver about the brand. Yeah. Anyone? Please, just maybe one aspect to consider if you are organizing uh, several day events. Always mind the fact that people dedicate a big part of their private time to your brand, to your event. Yeah. So make, it, make the most mm -hmm. out of it and consider this aspect yeah. as well, because those people could spend their time, that time, with their families or with their hobbies. Very it's well said. Yeah. Someone else want to add something? No. One thing sometimes, we consider incentive uh, on, in a way which is, okay, it's pleasure, it's reward. Yes, it is. But it's also an opportunity to talk with the people who are selling your models, who are doing something for you. So it's always a good moment I to, mean, I uh, to show. I can add something uh, on incentives. So this is the nope. one for, sponsor, for sports event, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Winner takes it all. <laughs> nice award. <laughs> so you organize the experience of the guests. It's uh, it's related to the to your event, but it's also a way to to show uh, uh, something different, something. Uh, 
where they, they feel the they feel the event and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a funny one. And, and it's very human. Yeah. You know, it's very identifiable. I want to yeah. hang out with all of them. And so. during a sport event, of course, usually you are spending a lot of money in the sponsorship because uh, companies like yours or like Nissan, I, I used to know, are spending a lot of money in this kind of thing. You need to make sure that everything everything you do in this kind of event is really getting the money back in a way. So it's very important to, to make sure that the experience will be at the level. Don't, don't say, okay, but I spent so much money on this sponsorship, I don't have more money to, mm. to organize a nice hotel or blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. It's, uh, it's useless to, to make this kind of saving. Very good. Anyone? Yeah, yeah. please. Uh, can I share a rule that we have uh, at Heineken that um, the one-third, two-thirds rule is that one-third of the money is going to the sponsorship itself, but two-thirds is going for the activation of the sponsorship. Of course. So this yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah. When you spend money on sponsorship, if you just pay the sponsorship, then you throw it up to the garbage. Yeah. Because uh, you have to have a communication strategy around that, that sponsorship. You have to have events around that sponsorship. You have to have other activities. If it's, if you are, for example, we are also sponsoring the uh, Women Volleyball League in Turkey because it's the best sport. We got all the championships in the world, national mm. and uh, team-wise. But if we just spend the money on the sponsorship and our logo is there, it doesn't mean anything. Exactly. We do activities mm. in the matches. If you are a fan, when you go to a match, you want to do something, you want to participate, because when you are there watching, even if it's eSports or a real game, you want to be one of those athletes, one of those players. So you have to give them a chance to participate in the event somehow. Also incentives sure. uh, in the sports, gaming, or whatever incentive you gave, it shouldn't be a burden. For example, we made that mistake. We, for this year in the World Cup, we made a promotion. We were selling TV sets and we said, okay, if you buy these TVs, you can go into this uh, lottery and if you win, you can go to the World Cup. Yeah. But they pay for the tax. And mm. uh, we, pay, we cover everything but they pay for the airport and uh, uh, other taxes, and nobody went. Oh. Mm. So we have to send our dealers instead of the customers, mm -hmm. because they didn't go. So when you are designing an incentive, you should be careful about not to make that incentive a burden to the customer, so it, can, it won't backfire to you. Yeah, yeah very good. Okay, so just to, to move to the next step of this uh, conclusion debate, maybe I think we can applaud all of you, because you did a great job. Thank you. Very good. Uh, just before we leave this room to, to have some rest or to go back to our hotel, globally, uh, I'd like to ask you two or three questions. Uh, do you think, based on everything we, we heard today, uh, do you think we can globally engage everyone, every type of population, or not, first? And yet, if yes, in which way? Is it in the same way or is it in a different way? What do you think about that? Change, yeah. Okay. I believe uh, to get engagement, you have to do, it's about people, as I said in the morning in my presentation. Yeah. So you have to get the insights about people and mm -hmm. what drives them, what motivates them. Every age group, every different uh, profile, every cultural background has a different motivator. So when you have to do first a market research and they, you, are, you have to find them what motivates them or what kind of platforms mm. motivates them. So you can do something on digital, you can be some, mm. do something outdoor. So to get the engagement, you have to be looking into the target audience drivers. Yeah. Definitely. Tess, Very good. I think you already I mentioned it in your presentation. Yeah, I fully so. agree. I mean, and I think to, to add another component to that, you know, it's even if you have the most sought after platform in the world, it's about who you put together in that. I, I give an example and I use one that's appropriate at the moment, the football. Um, the, the VIP box in the Rio de Janeiro World Cup final held 12 people. So, you know, you have your two hosts, for example, and then you have five relationships because you generally are going to invite pairs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the risk is if you put people together that don't belong together, there's no common language, there's no common etiquette at a sporting event, there's no common age group, then you're going to have a captive audience of people who by default offend each other. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, that hot ticket to the best event in the world, it all comes down to who you're in a room with at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So your audience selection and your nomination criteria is first and foremost before you even decide on your event platform. And you, Keta? 
Yeah, I totally agree. And um, you have to do your homework. That's, that's the thing. You have to know your audience. And uh, um, whether it's a five-person event or a 300,000 event, and I think, I believe that uh, every person has a trigger, a motivational mm. trigger. Mm -hmm. We just have to find that. The challenge is when you have a very diverse audience. You have a great, <laughs> very big event, great event with selected VIPs, but also you have to satisfy the crowds and you have to meet their, their expectations. So you really have to consider um, satisfying everyone. And mm -hmm. I think our, our um, job, our secret is to, to work on setting the expectations already. So your homework before the event is very important mm -hmm. yeah. because that's you who sets the expectations of the visitors. You, that's you who can set the expectation of, of, of your attendees. And then it's your job to satisfy that expectation that you have chosen. I feel, if I may understand, at the end, it becomes the one-to-one -one event somehow because it's mm -hmm. the single event. For the person you are getting to the event, in fact, it's only it's her or his event at the end. It's not your event anymore. It is the event of your participant, but it has to be a single event because it's more or less... We do a lot of marketing, one-to-one -one marketing now, very mm -hmm. lot uh, of... Uh, of um, um, of, yeah, of, uh, I don't remember the word, but anyway, so we do one-to-one -one marketing anyway, and we should do somehow a one-to-one -one event, even if we are inviting mm -hmm. more than 3,000 yeah, people. And that's yes. what we experience. Every, everything goes into the direction of being personalized. So mm. events should be personalized. Exactly, as well. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I had a um, motto at the White House. I told everyone that we worked with, volunteers and staff alike, I said I've got one rule, yeah. is that we don't host events. There's no event in this house, the White House. We don't host events. We host guests. Yeah. And everything we need to do, you have to look from the guest perspective. Because you can have an amazing room with the best linen and a floral and lighting. And if one person can't get a drink because the line's too long, forget it. If one person can't hear because your audio's not right, if one person can't see, if it's too cold in the room, you know, you might as well have lost them all. So I, I love the focus that's been given today through everybody speaking about the power and the focus on the guests. I think that we are moving from product marketing to customer marketing. Mm. To, mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same for everything. We have to focus on the target. We have to focus on the person we are doing the thing to. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, one more because before we, we stop this discussion. Uh, as a final uh, tip or as a final uh, uh, experience, uh, based on your experience, what would you recommend to everyone here in this room? Uh, what would you do for engagement? What would you do as a, as a, as a tip to engage people? What is engagement for you? Yeah? Yes, please. So for me, it's what I call the third dimension. So all too often I still see events that have the audience dimension one, the event dimension two. And in a world where you can dine in the sky or under the water or fly to the moon in the next few years, it's not enough to have two dimensions. So for me, my, my tip is always to overlay a third dimension. And just as an example, you know, you have a great audience, you have a Formula One weekend in Monaco. Anyone can do that. It requires a budget and it requires a guest list. What they can't do is overlay a third dimension. For example, turn it into a content-themed event around the future of auto driverless cars, the, the future of automobiles, the robotics in the automotive industry. Overlaying every single event with a third dimension just makes it harder for your competitors to, to compete. Mm -hmm. Chata? Yeah, for me, engagement is not the goal, it's not the objective. For me, it's a tool how to get to my objective, how to reach my goal. Um, and maybe it's not the best uh, place to say that, but um, events are not always the best uh, tools for engaging people. So you always have to consider your objective and find the perfect tool for that. That's, that's our... Sorry. You cannot, no, solve every, very good. you cannot solve 100% of the problems with one solution. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. you want the whole package. Yeah, of course. And change? I, th I think, uh, you know, people are afraid to make mistakes. That's the reason when you are in a presentation like this or an exhibition where if somebody asks you a question, you don't want to answer because you don't want to make a mistake. But events and whatever you do, it involves people, and people involves mistakes. Mm. So you should be you should be frank with your you know out out fall, fall downs, setbacks, and stuff like that, and don't worry about too much. You should just let the flow go, and uh, eventually everything will turn around. And if it's a frank 
and a people-based approach, everything will work out fine. So you shouldn't be too worried about what can go wrong, because many things can go wrong. You should just focus on the people and making them feel everything is going smoothly, yeah. then everything will be set. Mm -hmm. And you, Laura, because it's time is my turn to lead the oh, discussion. Well, so yeah, I, was I can say get my, it from you now. My, uh, my best tip on engagement is for all of us to be at the shuttles at 7.15 in the lobby this evening to make it to the boat. But I'll leave it at that. Thank you. 7.15. <laughs> Thank you very much to everyone. So now I have the responsibility to make a kind of wrap-up conclusion on this one. As you could see, there are so many, many, many the ways to engage people. It's unlimited. We have many opportunities. It doesn't mean all time spending additional budget. It's just mm -hmm. to be about having common sense. Just focus on the people. Focus on your objective. And that's it. Then we have a lot of technology. And today, the world is so much changing that we are mm. able now to use a lot of facilities that we didn't have before. But anyway, technology, Engagement techniques, tools, whatever you use, doesn't have to take the lead on what you want to do. You want to deliver a message to people. You want to share an experience with them. You want to bring them. You want to make sure that they are becoming your ambassadors. They are not anymore attending an event. They are becoming your ambassadors. They are mm. taking a kind of a, not a function, but a, a kind of, mm -hmm. of energy coming, a kind of fuel, a kind of, a, just to go out and say, wow, yes. And I remember one of uh, a very uh, famous uh, advertising company said, the best ever event is the event you didn't attend, and finally you said, well, I missed <laughs> it. And this is somehow what is important, because it's not about the event itself, it's not about the setup, it's not about the, the budget, it's not about the way you do it, but it's about the emotion and the way people will feel it. Mm -hmm. And this is how to engage people. So globally, what does it mean for engagement? Engagement is increasing memorization. It's increasing the commitment of the people. It's increasing a lot of things just to make them around. It's engaging also, um, it's creating, sorry, uh, engagement brings more activation of the people. So they are not static anymore. Mm -hmm. They are not watching a video. They are in the video. They are becoming actors. This is what engagement is bringing as well. And uh, at the end, it's, it, there needs to be a very strong connection between what you do as an engagement technique and what you are. Not only what you want to deliver, but what you are. Because if you are lying, if you are not 100% aligned with what you say, people will immediately know it. Mm -hmm. And I know Pablo didn't mention it today, but the new generation, they are really looking for meaning. They don't want to be told something. They want to make sure that what you're saying is really the truth. And they have many ways to check. And they are not always saying, well, yes, I agree with you. Yes, I agree. No, mm -hmm. no, not anymore. <laughs> they are immediately saying, are you sure? Are you really saying the truth? So this is where you have to be very careful as well. And ultimately, engagement is creating, of course, a team spirit. And as I said, it's making you, your, your visitors, your uh, um, attendees becoming ambassadors of your brand. And if I could make a kind of parallel with the uh, film director, because this morning we, we, we heard about, a little bit about this one. A film director, when he's creating, creating a movie, he is thinking about all the effect he will put in the movie. You have, of course, the, 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 the shape of the, of the actors, you have the style of the actors, but I mean, it's not only about the scenario, it's not only about the images, it's also about the effect. Because this is the way for him to drive the spectators in the direction he wants mm -hmm. to bring them. It's the way for him to, to make sure they are always captivated and always following the film. And somehow, for me, Engagement techniques, whatever you put as an engagement tool in, the, in an event, is just to do this job. And, uh, and that's it. And thank you very much. Nadine, <laughs> thank you for directing us. Thank you very much. Nadine, uh, everybody. I didn't do it as much as I Thank you <laughs> thank all. Thank you very much.